Kishman Bharati case in 1973, given by 13 judges bench, and context is very important. See, context of case is very important, and context I have told you, and that is a Golaknath case onwards. What was happening in Golaknath case onward, that will become the context of Kishan Bharati case, because somehow there was a power tussle was going on between Indira Gandhi and judiciary. Let us see what was the context. Indira Gandhi was focusing over committed judiciary. So it was very interesting. Indira Gandhi was focusing over committed judiciary and committed bureaucracy. Committed judiciary and bureaucracy. And we know that committed bureaucracy and committed judiciary is very much against the idea of a democratic principle. Because in democratic system, judiciary and bureaucracy, this is independent, neutral. They are not supposed to align with any political party. That is point for judges. And in country like US, in US what happens, judges are having clear cut, their they keep their ideology. But in country like India, judges are supposed to become neutral. And the idea of committed bureaucracy, committed means committed for what? Com com committing toward the ideology of government, um, ideology of party. And why it was very difficult? Because in a multi-party democracy like India, because once a party ruling in center, other party in the state. Therefore, how would a judiciary or a bureaucrat because particularly IS officers, they are working both in a state as well as in union. It means how they are supposed to become committed toward the a political party, because the bureaucracy and judges, they are supposed to be committed towards constitution, not towards any party. See, in a socialist country like China, in a socialist country like China, committed judiciary and committed, committed judiciary and committed bureaucracy is very normal scene. Why? Because in China what happens, every organ of the government must have their commitment to a party. In China, once a, once a person becomes the civil servant, becomes the member of armed forces, first and foremost, they should become the member of a political party. Every person belong to political party, they are sent in different branches of government, but not in case of India. Here we are having multi-party system. In China, primarily there is one party, Communist Party. Therefore, what Indira Gandhi, Indira Gandhi, there was an allegation against Indira Gandhi, that Indira Gandhi was a demoralizing judiciary. This was the allegation. Indira Gandhi was acting against judiciary, but on the other side, if you look, what Indira Gandhi, and what Indira Gandhi was alleging that, judiciary is trying to derail Indira Gandhi. So that is the point during Indira Gandhi, it was a full-blown war between judiciary and parliament. This is the first time our judiciary and executive, because what judiciary, judiciary thought that Indira Gandhi is trying to undermine judiciary. Indira Gandhi says that judiciary is an obstacle for path of a social justice. What Indira Gandhi thought that even judiciary is also working against Indira Gandhi. And that is a point what judiciary were looking for. Judiciary were asserting for her own autonomy. Judiciary was asserting for her own autonomy because, because look, there is some principle. Why it was said that, why people say that Indira Gandhi was a suppressing judiciary and on the other hand, Indira Gandhi faced almost five back-to-back decisions against her government, beginning from Golaknath case. If you look beginning, beginning from Golaknath case, it was Golaknath case which put a very much restriction before Indira Gandhi. Because Indira Gandhi was looking for the implementation of DPSP. Indira Gandhi was looking for uh, implementation of uh, social justice. But because of the Gorakhanath case, she was unable to amend the constitution for implementing DPSP. Although Indira Gandhi was also lacking majority because of a division of Congress party. Indira Gandhi was not positioned into coming with any constitutional amendment because she was not commanding 
टू थर्ड मेजोरिटी आफ्टर द पार्टीशन ऑफ कांग्रेस दैट वॉज डिवाइडेड इन कांग्रेस आर एन कांग्रेस हो सो दिस वॉज अ फुल ब्लोन वॉर बिटवीन जुडिशियल एग्जीक्यूटिव एंड दैट्स वेरी स्ट्रेंज वाई स्ट्रेंज बिकॉज वी ऑप्टेड पार्लियामेंट्री फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट वी नो दैट वी डिड नॉट ऑप्टेड दिस मॉडल ऑफ अ प्रेसिडेंशियल फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट बिकॉज इन प्रेसिडेंशियल फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट देर इज मोर चांसेस ऑफ क्लेस बिटवीन थ्री ऑर्गन ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट नॉट इन पार्लियामेंट्री फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट and that was a point what why our founding fathers want to see more power for parliament our founding fathers of indian constitution if you look they want to give more power for parliament because why because social justice was the responsibility of parliament but our founding fathers they were very much committed for independent judiciary remember the term is very important they were looking for independent judiciary they never thought of a supreme judiciary but in meantime what happened there was a conflict between judiciary and executive independent judiciary is a precondition for functioning of a democracy but supreme judiciary can create a problem for parliamentary functioning and that was a clash although judiciary says that no indira gandhi is trying to suppressing judiciary because there are few facts there are few facts how indira gandhi try to undermine the independence of judiciary there are few facts beside giving decision against indira gandhi because you can't say that because if judiciary is giving decision against any government that doesn't means that judiciary is against the government because judiciary is supposed to bound with rule of law judiciary cannot work on the principle of political parameter and what is the problem with judiciary judiciary is a body which give decision and decision will favor someone decision can not satisfy both parties and that is a point once decision goes against any particular uh, party they will always allege that no judiciary is no longer independent because judiciary is siding with one party that is a dilemma of judiciary but it was a full blown war in that context what happened even justice sikri at that time justice sikri was chief justice in 1973 and justice sikri came from the bar even there is a two type of judges in india one from bar and other from the even our benches the judges who are coming from the in supreme court in supreme court there is a two type of judges one which is coming from the judiciary of the high court other they are directly coming from bar council of india they can be appointed as judges so this has been very rare phenomena in india the people who are having the bar and they are appointed as a judge and sikri was one of them sikri was member of bar he was very bright just in 1973 and what happens there is episode people are saying that in 1973 who were here there was a conference of judges in new delhi conference of judges in new delhi was just conference may even there was judge of uh, germany german judges also came in that conference to us german judges ne kaha ki you look whenever whenever government try to demoralize the political institution this is sign of arrival of a fascist government what justice sigri thought that it means we are also on the verge of moving towards fascism justice justice sigri says that i was very much determined to pronounce that decision at any cost aur ye interesting part hai justice sigri ne jis din decision diya agle din retire ho gaye at any cost he was very much committed to pronounce this decision 13 judges bench and the issues which were examined by the keshavan bharati case that is very important because you look why why again issues are very important because look what was the context again why, why what was the context because what happened in 1971 look the constitutional amendment that was uh, brought about by indira gandhi let us see the constitutional amendment that 24th 25th 26th 29th 27 28th was not even 27 28 then 29th came therefore look the speed of constitutional amendment that was done by indira gandhi that was alarming it means does it mean this if any political party commanding two third majority in parliament because in 1970 when indira gandhi got the landslide victory 
does it mean that any party which is commanding majority in parliament they are entitled to change any part of the constitution therefore the question is very clear this nation should be governed by majority principle of majority or this nation should be governed by principle of rule of law this was the greater question tabhi ab dekhoge ki these constitutional amendment were very vital to the speed of indira gandhi indira gandhi was also very vocal against the judiciary और उसमें क्या हुआ ट्वेंटी फोर्थ अमेंडमेंट उन्होंने क्या किया इवन ट्वेंटी फोर्थ अमेंडमेंट में हुआ क्या दीज आर कॉन्टेक्स्ट अब केशवन भारती केस ट्वेंटी फोर्थ अमेंडमेंट क्या हुआ ये स्टडी आई टोल्ड यू इंदिरा गांधी फर्स्ट टाइम ब्रॉट अबाउट टू न्यू क्लॉजेस इन आर्टिकल थ्री सिक्स एट क्लॉज वन एंड क्लॉज थ्री एंड इट इज सिंपल वट ट्वेंटी फोर्थ अमेंडमेंट प्रिस्क्राइब फॉर फर्स्ट in article 368 parliament is having power and procedure of amending the constitution parliament has both power as well as a procedure for amending the constitution that was a clause 1 of article 368 and according to that even parliament can amend any part of the constitution including fundamental right by 24th amendment because 24th amendment came because of golaknath case golaknath case is that parliament cannot amend the fundamental right here 24th amendment says that while utilizing their constituent power of parliament not ordinary power of parliament while utilizing the constituent power of parliament parliament can amend any part of the constitution therefore article 368 include power and procedure both so therefore there is no limitation over the amending power of parliament no limitation and that is the point no limitation means even the law which is written in clause 2 of article 13 that does not include the constitutional law that not include the constitutional law so this was 24th amendment now 25th 25th amendment was landmark because because of 25th amendment first time article 39 sub clause b and c it was given the primacy over the fundamental right and fundamental right means article 14 19 and 31 so this was the first time where dpsp was given the primacy over fundamental right it means therefore what indira gandhi was giving the indication that she want to implement social justice she is a socialist she want to remove poverty and that was slogan of indira gandhi and somehow indira gandhi indicated that judiciary is an obstacle in bringing out of socialist goal so that was a very interesting therefore she was attacking over the institution and see attack over institutions nothing new in india nehru never attack over any institution but what happens as of now agar hum election haar gaye to humne kya kiya there is a evm so every people every, every person criticizes cag they they every person criticizes election commission winning the election means election commission is fair losing election means election commission is not fair तो बस सीधी आगे अगर बोल्ड हो गए तो नो बॉल मैच फिक्स हो गया तो अब आप देखोगे दिस वाज अ वेरी लैंडमार्क इंफॉर्मेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है देर फॉर एनी अमेंडमेंट इज कमिंग विथ इशू इज नॉट फैक्ट बिकॉज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इज अ फैक्ट और कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन आइडियोलॉजी देर फॉर ट्वेंटी फोर्थ अमेंडमेंट टेल्स अबाउट द अमेंडिंग पावर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट अमेंडिंग पावर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट वर्स जुडिशियल रिव्यू 25th amendment says that dpsp is more important than fundamental everywhere there are issues dpsp is more important than fundamental right and that is point if you are picking the issues then you can same time write the same time write the means if you are picking some fact then you can utilize for pt so study is very much integrated uske baad kya hua what was more alarming even by 25th amendment indira gandhi removed the term compensation and now the term that inserted that is amount but that is not a 
very grave what was most important even there was a restriction over judicial review that was very much alarming because you look why this was very interesting how indira gandhi can prevent judicial review because because parliament is entitled to amend the constitution under article 368 we know that there is separation of power under separation of power if parliament is entitled to amend the constitution how parliament can restrict the power of judicial review therefore it was a encroachment of power of a, that was given to judiciary that is reason judiciary enjoying article 32 judiciary is given the article 226 even it means if the question is that if parliament can amend the constitution by 368 does it mean that next time parliament will also amend article 32 and 226 there is logical question therefore it was very much objectionable parliament cannot utilize the amend power otherwise if you look the language of 368 language of 368 says that any part of the constitution parliament can amend any part of the constitution prescribe that it needs two third majority any part of constitution does it means article 32 does it mean that article 226 this is a power of judicial review so that was very much questionable when indira gandhi try to restrict the power of judicial review and third we know that it was not at all important because it was a evolution of privy purses abolition of privy purses that was not very much disputed abolition of privy purses that was not disputed and finally what was uh, important because these four constitutional amendments were challenged in the court of law in keshavan bharati case these four constitutional amendment were challenged in court of law in keshavan bharati case and by 29th amendment what happened by 29th amendment the land reform act of kerala land reform act of kerala that was put in nine schedule put in nine schedule therefore in keshavan bharati case supreme court was examining these issues this was the context of keshavan bharati case and now let us see what is decision of keshavan bharati case was a very interesting of keshavan bharati case ka decision tha kya what is the decision of keshavan bharati case first keshavan bharati case is that under article 368 there is a inherent limitation implied limitation look it means the power which is available you remember what supreme court says that article 368 means parliament is having power to amend the constitution parliament have to follow the procedures prescribed in article 368 368 include procedure and power both therefore supreme court partially accepted 24th amendment supreme court partially accepted 24th amendment but what was the objection of supreme court supreme court says that article 368 include inherent limitation the question is that what does it mean by inherent limitation implied limitation because this was very interesting question if you look 368 if you look 368 there was a nothing like inherent limitation agar main aapko 368 article aapko dikha do to aap dekhoge isme to koi inherent limitation hai hi nahi hai that is 368 to ab 368 ki let us see the language of 368 not with standing anything in this constitution parliament makes exercise its constituent power not ordinary law making power ordinary law making power of parliament lies in 245 and 246 ordinary law making power by the way of addition variation repealing every 
thing will be considered as an amendment. Amendment means we can add, edit, we can add anything, change anything, delete anything. Pro any any provision of this constitution in accordance with the procedure laid down in the this article. Any provision ka matlab hota hai ki there is no limitation. Article 368 says no limitation is there over the parliament. But does it mean that if there is a no limitation over the power, amending power of parliament, does it mean that once parliament amend the constitution, it become like constituent assembly? There is larger question. What parliament was claiming that, why, why Keshwar and Bharati case become very important because judici says that there is an inherent limitation. So question is that, what is the inherent limitation? It means they can amend the constitution but not basic structure this is inherent limitation and the question is that how this theory of inherent limitation implied limitation came because Keshwaran Bharati case came with idea that how we should interpret the constitution How we should interpreting the constitution? Because there is a one way to interpret the constitution. Let us see the text. What is written in the constitution? And earlier, before 1967, before 1973, even Supreme Court was heavily relying over text. That is the reason, if you remember, in Gopalan case, Supreme Court says that fundamental rights means right to life and personal liberty. Whatever written in our constitution, that right is available for the citizens. Citizens cannot demand any other right which is not written in the constitution. This was a this was interpretation of the constitution that was a textual. And if if judiciary is interpreting the constitution according to text, therefore what is happening? Then judiciary is somehow believing in the supremacy of parliament. Parliament is a body represent the will of the people. So in democracy, largely because this is not only in India, but even in US too, founding father of US constitution, they also thought that wherever this elected body, elected bodies should have more power than non-elected. Judiciary is non-elected body. Parliament is elected body. Therefore, what is a text? That is the job of Supreme Court. Supreme Court should not interpret what is the spirit of the constitution. But in Keshwan Bharati case, what Supreme Court came with idea, spirit of the constitution should be also examined then text Keshwan Bharati case was landmark because it says that spirit of the constitution is more important and what is spirit of the constitution philosophy of the constitution what is spirit of the constitution philosophy of the constitution what is spirit of the constitution ideology of the constitution what is spirit of the constitution theory of the constitution that is point constitution is not merely sum of articles that's very interesting constitution is not merely sum of articles if somebody want to study constitution merely looking towards articles articles are merely skeleton if we are only perceiving towards art skill therefore we are missing the larger philosophy soul of Indian constitution and that is the point, soul, abstract. If we are saying philosophy abstract, ideology abstract, the question arises that where this philosophy lies? What is this ideology? What is this theory? Because everything is very much abstract. Because law must be concrete. How I should understand what is the philosophy? And that is the point. In Keshwaran Bharati case, first time Supreme Court says that preamble is a part of the constitution. In 1960, in Beru Bari case, Supreme Court says that preamble is not part of the constitution. That is the point. Where we have to search this philosophy, this ideology, this theory of the constitution, that lies in the preamble. That is the point. Supreme Court in Keshwan Bharati case says that preamble is a, an integral part of the constitution. Preamble is an integral part of the constitution. And you look at the preamble. Preamble tells about philosophy or preamble tells about the articles. Philosophy. 
and we know that once preamble provided about we the people of india republic democratic even you you can explain entire constitution in terms of republic democratic you will be surprised know that republic democratic term no where it in our constitution how supreme court was discovering philosophy from the preamble first republic democratic unity integrity secularism that is part of preamble and preamble also tells about a balance between justice liberty and equality even preamble it is not a preamble my dear friends Pre it is it is a combination of french revolution glorious revolution with communist revolution because once we talk about justice therefore we are looking towards socialist goal but we were never follow the principle of justice likewise of russia therefore again we are talking for liberty justice therefore look the goals of preamble it was a we the people of india want to establish india as a sovereign sovereign even republic sovereign socialist secular republic democratic and we want to give indians for justice justice then l liberty then equality then fraternity it means we want to maintain a balance between various ideologies where we are looking for justice is so welfare socialism equality is kind of socialism liberty ideology liberalism and that is point recently in putta swami case supreme court says that so why supreme court refused to accept the compulsory provision of aadhar card everywhere because supreme court says that does it mean that social welfare cannot go without protecting right to privacy right to privacy is equally important likewise of social justice and my dear friend the question is very clear which ever once ruled became very powerful once a ruler become very powerful they want to capture the power on the name of social justice they want to capture the power on the name of well being of the people therefore supreme court was discovering the philosophy of indian constitution in preamble in preamble moreover when people ask that where is the spirit of the constitution the spirit means who will examine the spirit judiciary or parliament or the judiciary who is responsible for interpreting the constitution judiciary therefore who will examine about the spirit judiciary that is point since keshwaran bharti case onwards the idea of judicial activism started in india the story of judicial activism is as old as the keshwaran bharti case remember because first time it is not keshwaran bharti case keshwaran bharti case says that parliament cannot amend any part of the constitution first time in keshwaran bharti case supreme court has put limitation over the power of parliament that is very important limitation over the power of parliament power of parliament it means supreme court says that dear parliamentarians don't claim that you are a member of constituent assembly no there was a constituent assembly was sitting once only and therefore cons constitution automatic the constitution automatic transfer you power to amend the constitution under article 368 supreme court says that we are not preventing your power we are not snatching your power because supreme court says that article 368 itself has a basic structure and here supreme court says the preamble is a part of basic uh, preamble preamble incorporate the principle basic structure preamble incorporate philosophy theory ideology we have to look preamble but apart from that if you look the idea basic structure once we see the basic structure look supreme court never define what is basic structure supreme court says a philosophy ideology and the question is that philosophy means monday monday mat ribanna everyone is having different philosophy kisi philosophy kaisi hai zindagi ke gham ko dhoe mein udata chala gaya like kis ok koi philosophy kaise life is like a war अब बताओ आई आई टी भी पास कर लिया अच्छी नौकरी मिल गई तभी घबराए हुए हो क्या जरूरत है घबराने की डोंट टेक लाइफ एज वॉर बी कूल कस्टमर 
भाई फिलोसफी अलग अलग है लेकिन कुछ लोग अगर फिलोसफी ऐसे ना अन्ना मलई अ पर्सन यंग ऑफ थर्टी नाइन ईयर्स आईपीएस ऑफिसर नाउ कॉन्टेस्टिंग फॉर द ऑफिस ऑफ सीएम इसलिए हमें शांत नहीं बैठना चाहिए अलग फिलोसफी है कुछ लोग करें कूल भी कूल है एक ही जीवन जिंदगी ना मिलेगी दोबारा प्रॉब्लम इज दैट वन सुप्रीम कोर्ट इज सेइंग दैट बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर में फिलोसफी सो फिलोसफी मीन्स फिलोसफी ऑफ एक्स इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम फिलोसफी ऑफ वाई और कई लोग बड़े बड़े समय शांत मिलते हैं जैसे दंडी स्वामी की फिलोसफी अलग थी वन सिकंदर वॉज कमिंग टूवर्ड्स इंडिया अलेक्जेंडर द ग्रेट तो उस, उस, उसका पहले इनकाउंटर किससे हुआ दंडी स्वामी से तो सिकंदर ने कहा तुम मुझे जानते नहीं उसने कहा जानने की जरूरत भी नहीं है कहा मैं तुमको मार दूंगा उनके तुम मारो क्या मेरे पास सोल है वो मार नहीं सकते बॉडी है नहीं एक एक से फिलोसफी वाले आदमी है भाई अवघड़ वो इसके फिलोसफी भी तो है वैसे घूम रहा है और एक आदमी है जो दिन रात मेहनत कर रहा है हमें आगे जाना है आगे जाना है कुछ लोग करें आगे जाकर क्या करोगे विला हो Why you are part of a rat race? Everybody is having different philosophy. So the question that how we can come to know that what is the philosophy? Therefore, Supreme Court interpreted the basic structure. Once they are giving one decision, second decision. Therefore, if you look the element of basic structure, so we can't define what is basic structure. We can't define basic structure because Supreme Court never defined basic structure. but on the basis of decision of supreme court we can summarize some list of basic structure and what is list and very interestingly supreme court says that article 32 is a part of basic structure 226 is a part of basic structure and automatically 36 it is a part of basic structure otherwise supreme court never pinpointed that article is not basic structure and you know that it is a 32 and 226 are judicial independence it is a 32 and 226 are judicial autonomy it is a 368 are separation of power therefore what are the list of basic structure look the parliamentary form of government parliamentary form of government that is basic structure can you tell me where is a term parliamentary form of government is written in our constitution can you tell me any article nowhere that is point these are basic structure parliamentary form of government is basic structure therefore in 2000 year 2000 bankard chaliya commission was appointed for reviewing of the constitution then even bankard chaliya commission that is known as nclwc National Commission for Reviewing of a Working of Constitution, Venkat Chile Commission says that we are not supposed to change the parliamentary form of government in a very historical Narasimha Rao case. Supreme Court says that parliamentary form of government basic structure. You know that the term is not written in our constitution. Therefore, our constitution theory or our constitution is only the club of articles. Theory, to an ideology, it constitution. and you remember even more than 100 articles that is attached with parliamentary form of government parliamentary form of government means house of people council of state council of minister president president everything comes in parliamentary form of government and that is that is a point basic structure is very broad area therefore any where parliament can put restriction over the amending power of the parliament any where even judiciary can put restriction over the amending power of parliament then you look federal form of government basic structure even term federal no where mention our constitution union article 1 of indian constitution says that india that is bharat shall be union of states and you know federal government almost include more than 200 articles federation even territory then legislative power executive power financial power even freedom of trade article 263 262 2258 2, 258, 253 and 279 everything comes in federal government that is point basic structure is a theory soul pillar of house aur aap dekho maan lo ki aapne car car le gaye garage mein 
और मैकेनिक ने कहा भाई इंजन निकाल लें बाकी कार ले जाओ आप डॉक्टर के पास गए और अपने कहा स्नीजिंग हो रही है एलर्जी हो रहा है डॉक्टर ने कहा ऐसा है हार्ट ही निकाल लेते हैं ना होगा नाक ना होगी स्नीजिंग ना होगी एलर्जी कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन जस्ट लाइक अ बॉडी अरे मैं अमेंडमेंट करना सर्जरी करना कहां करोगे बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर में नहीं है एंड लेटर सी दाइडर एरिया बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर देन सेपरेशन ऑफ पावर द टर्म सेपरेशन ऑफ पावर नो वेयर मैं कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन जुडिशियल रिव्यू द टर्म जुडिशियल रिव्यू नॉट एट ऑल मैंशन एनी वेयर इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन दैट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग इवन जुडिशियल इंडिपेंडेंस नो वेयर इवन वी कैन रीड आउट some provisions of indian constitution which indicate to which is indicating towards the idea of judicial independence but the term judicial independence mentioned nowhere in the constitution judicial independence koi likha hi nahi term separation of power and federal government parliamentary form of government and the term secularism that is included by uh, 42nd amendment secularism initially it was not there in indian constitution that was amended in article uh, by the 42nd amendment in preamble and therefore look this is basic structure and thereafter unity and integrity free and fair election rule of law rule of law and the harmony between fundamental rights and dpsp harmony between fundamental rights and dpsp these are part of basic structure it means therefore basic structure theory is very landmark and why is further why is very much landmark you know that once supreme court pronounced the idea basic structure this is a, a very much limiting the power of amending a parliament aur aapko yaad dilade why it was very landmark first time in the history of supreme court first time supreme court struck a struck down any constitutional amendment act remember before 25th amendment supreme court never is any doubt over constitutional amendment supreme court is struck down over ordinary law but first time in the history of indian judiciary first time supreme court nullified second part of 25th amendment and this this became the series over supreme court nullified the 25th amendment only one part of 25th amendment not this and you know that then series started 39 constitutional amendment was struck down for some element of 42nd amendment was struck down some element not every amendment then latest 99th constitutional amendment was struck down therefore let us see the fallout of a idea of a theory basic structure of keshavan bharti case what was the fallout it may never look the fallout what was the fallout even now even any any constitutional amendment forget about ordinary law it means any constitutional amendment which is a violating basic structure that can be nullified and the constitutional amendment which were struck down by supreme court while applying theory basic structure and that was second part of 25th amendment because we know the principle of uh, we know the principle of severability severability means once supreme court examine any act or any constitutional amendment act supreme court never nullify the whole act supreme court nullify the only act which is violating the basic structure therefore second part of 25th amendment was nullified which was restricting the judicial power of judicial review then again 2039th amendment was struck down this was once asked in uh, upsc pt 39th amendment was brought about after the judgment of allahabad high court when allahabad high court nullified the election of indira gandhi from rivalry under corrupt practices under representation of people sect 51 then 
then parliament came with amendment and parliament came with amendment and parliament said that nobody can raise any doubt over the election of president vice president pm and speaker even these elections cannot be raised in the judiciary that was by 39th amendment supreme court in famous raj narayan case struck down acha raj narayan bhi apne dekho ek zamane ki politics thi socialist the raj narayan ek baar circuit house mein aaye the even somehow government says that there is no space in circuit house wo mattress laga ke sadak pe hi so gaye for getting lime light wo bhi zamane lag the par politics mein agar aap aam aadmi nahi rahoge to baat gadbad ho jayegi then then constitu- then again supreme court struck down the clause 4 and 5th of article 368 because indira gandhi indira gandhi was very much adamant to change the theory basic structure and by 14th amendment even again parliament try to encroach the principle of basic structure and by 42nd amendment what happens clause 4 and 5 of article 368 was inserted in the constitution clause 4 and 5 of article 368 that was inserted in the constitution and what was clause 4 and clause 5 of the constitution it simply says that even parliament can amend any part of the constitution therefore clause 4 and clause 5 of the constitution was simply for overruling the decision of keshavan bharti case and here you can see the part 4 and part 5th of the article 368 is still in the constitution of india but it is in coma because supreme court says that no amendment this is part 4 and part 5th of the clause 4 and clause 5th of the constitution and by 42nd amendment no amendment of this constitution including provision of part 3 made or purporting to have been made under this article after the commencement of 50 constitution shall be called in any court of law in any ground is a seedha matlab hai even no constitutional amendment can be brought about in supreme court and any court because once parliament is having the constitutional amendment then parliament is uh, exercising her constituent power so you can raise over there any dispute over the ordinary law but not the constitutional amendment power because this is special power of article 368 this is special power of article 368 and then here by declared there shall be no limitation look no no limitation whatever on the constituent power of the parliament to amend by the way of addition variation repeal provision of this constitution this article but what happened keshavan bharti case doctrine of basic structure was repeated by judiciary doctrine of basic structure was repeated by judiciary 39th amendment was struck down in raj narayan case indira gandhi versus raj narayan case this was a fall out of a keshavan bharati case indira gandhi versus raj narayan case this was struck down 42nd amendment this was struck down in the case of a minerva mills case minerva mills case therefore supreme court that's very interesting supreme court changed various decisions from time to time supreme court overruled the her own decisions but here supreme court maintain the doctrine of basic structure because supreme court says that doctor it is not doctrine of basic structure but that is recognizing the principle of rule of law constitutionalism idea of a idea of a basic structure even support the idea of constitutionalism constitutionalism means government and government is not supreme constitutionalism means parliament is not supreme and parliament is entitled to amend the article uh, amend the constitution but cannot take out the basic structure then the question is that how we can decide when parliament is taking out basic structure and when parliament is uh, taking out fringe element what what are you saying 
No, no, no. Parliament, because in parliamentary form of government, executive is also part of parliament. Therefore, neither parliament is supreme nor executive. So, people have said, okay, the parliament is supreme, but you are going to be supreme. So, people have objected to the judiciary. But the judiciary says that we are not blocking the power of amendment of parliament. Because the Supreme Court has struck down few amendments only. The Supreme Court has never struck down every amendment. Because as of now, the latest amendment is 106. So the Supreme Court says that unnecessarily we are blaming that we are blocking the amendment of parliament. We are snatching away every power of parliament. But remember, our, our constitution should not be like the constitution of Pakistan and China. In Pakistan and China, parliament or government can change the constitution any time. But in the US, but in India, this is doctrine of basic structure. It means Supreme Court or parliament is supposed to interpreting the constitution or rewriting the constitution. So parliament is there to supplement the constitution or rewrite the constitution. If we want to rewrite the constitution, then we have to connect with Dr. Ambedkar. Nehru, who will come from? And they took only 2 years, 11 months and 18 days. But we are sure that our present member of parliament is unable to finish that wonderful work in that stipulated time. That is almost impossible. So tell me, where will they call them? Where will they call them? That is the point. In article, when Keshwan Bharati case, the Supreme Court says that. And the Supreme Court is very interesting. आए थे तो केस लेकर कौन केशवन भारती केस केशवन भारती केस तो मॉन्क ही वाज़ मॉन्क फ्रॉम केरला उन्होंने पूछा फलीस नरीमन से उन्होंने पूछा कि जो और सीनर वेडिंग के थे उनके भाई ये सब तो बताओ यार मेरा राइट टू प्रॉपर्टी क्या हुआ नानी पाल की वाला उनका बाबा जी आप बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर की बात हो रही है आप राइट टू प्रॉपर्टी की बात किए जा रहे हो अरे भाई उनका नहीं मैं राइट टू प्रॉपर्टी बताओ मेरी जमीन मिली कि नहीं ट्वेंटी नाइन्थ अमेंडमेंट जैसे जैसे कल किसी ने पूछा गोलखनाथ को जमीन मिली कि नहीं मिली आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी नाइन एक तरफ थर्टी नाइन एक तरफ ये बताओ गोलखनाथ को जमीन मिली कि नहीं मिली ये इशू तो ये है बाबा जी कुछ मिला नहीं दे थे पॉपुलरिटी दिस केस इज नोन एज अ फंडामेंटल राइट्स केस एंड वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग ऑब्जर्वेशन सुप्रीम कोर्ट से इज दैट फंडामेंटल राइट इज नॉट पार्ट ऑफ बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर बट जुडिशियल लिव इज पार्ट ऑफ बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर Therefore, Supreme Court says that 25th Amendment is okay. And look, even very famous legal expert, D.D. Basu, D.D. Basu has pointed out one drawback in the case of Keshwan Bharati case. He says that, look the irony. Supreme Court is saying that fundamental right is not part of basic structure. Again, I am saying that this was a part of Keshwan Bharati case. As of now, if you are deriving, you can include various fundamental rights as a part of a basic structure. Because if secularism is basic structure, then 25 is a part of fundamental right. 25 is part of basic structure. Rule of law means 14 automatically come. Without life liberty, you cannot imagine about the life. Privacy means, privacy is a fundamental. But now, therefore, as of now, we can derive that some fundamental right may be the part of basic structure. But in Keshwan and Bharati case, the Supreme Court says that fundamental rights are not part of basic structure. And the question is that judicial review is coming from Article 32, 226. 226 is not part of fundamental right, but 32 is a part of fundamental right. Is it 32 fundamental right part of fundamental right? 32 is basic structure, but fundamental right is not basic structure. What is this? और सवाल ये था इसे बाबा जी ने कहा यार हमें बिलावजा फंसा दिया ये तुम लोगों का पावर मामला था पार्लियामेंट का जुडिशरी का और फंडामेंटल डीपीएसपी का मामला अलग ही किसक गया इसका सिंपल सा मतलब क्या था इन केशवन भारती केस इफ यू लेट द इशू इफ ही वी वांट टू एनालाइज द इफ ही वी वांट टू एनालाइज द केशवन भारती केस फ्रॉम डिफरेंट इशूज देन Supreme Court says that yes, fundamental rights can be amended. That's very interesting. Supreme Court says that fundamental rights can be amended but not basic structure. 
दैट वॉज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग ऑब्जर्वेशन और अब देखोगे उसके बाद इसका मतलब सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑटोमेटिकली सेट दैट देर इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन फंडामेंट एस कैन बी अमेंडेड देयर फोर डी पी एस पी इज ऑटोमेटिकली गिवेन द इम्पोर्टेंस जुडिशियस इज दैट डी पी एस पी इज इंपॉर्टेंट एंड फॉर इंप्लीमेंटिंग ऑफ थर्टी नाइन बी सी यू कैन रिमूव फोर्टी नाइनटीन थर्टी वन देर फोर एज अ देर even dpsp can be implemented and for implementing dpsp we can amend fundamental right so here in between clash between fundamental right and dpsp dpsp won the battle let us see golaknath case golaknath case says that you cannot touch upon the fundamental right nobody can touch upon the fundamental right but here in keshavan bharti case just it was opposite any case from bharti case supreme court yes government can amend the funda uh, fundamental right no problem because popularly this case is known as a fundamental rights case and third between judiciary and parliament first between dpsp and fundamental right dpsp won the race and between judiciary and parliament and then judiciary says that here in, in india there is a parliamentary government not a supremacy of parliament like britain in a battle of judiciary and parliament who win the war judiciary who win the war judiciary and that is a point and parliament again try to encroach the judicial supremacy because parliament is saying that you are maintaining judicial supremacy therefore the entire case of judicial activism is starting from 73 onwards because supreme court has changed the way how constitution should be interpreting how we should interpret the constitution how we should define constitution understand the constitution this was landmark change to aap isi ko kaha bhi jata hai na ki after keshavan bharti case to indian judiciary was moving towards us judiciary ki bhai ab is pe dekhenge uske baad to manika gandhi case mein aur inhone change kar diya gradually they are changing अब देखो पार्लियामेंट्री सुप्रीमेसी तो नहीं रही बट कैन वी एक्सेप्ट जुडिशियल सुप्रीमेसी जुडिसी सिंह नो नो वी आर नॉट सुप्रीम एट ऑल वी आर परफॉर्मिंग अवर बेसिक टास्क एंड बेसिक टास्क इज अ प्रोटेक्टिंग फंडामेंटल राइट एंड बेसिक टास्क इज अ इंटरप्रेटिंग द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बट आवर इंटरप्रेटिंग द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन शुड नॉट बी स्टेटिक इट शुड बी चेंज अकॉर्डिंग टू चेंजिंग सर्कमस्टांसिस एंड इवेन पार्लियामेंट लेटर ट्राई टू इनक्रोच the idea of a basic structure through nine schedule later what happened we know that nine schedule was added in the constitution by first constitutional amendment and you remember that nine schedule was only and only only is very important only for protecting the fundamental right uh, sorry only for protecting the land reform act but what happened after decision of keshavan bharti case various apps that were included in nine schedule which were not related with the land reform like like you know the reservation of tamil nadu nothing to do with land reform 69% reservation of tamil nadu and then there was some laws related to monopolies monopolies restricted trade practices mrtp then some preventive laws like kofe posa some preventive laws like kofe posa these are few examples because because what government thought that if we are taking the help of nine schedule because initially nine schedule was a no flying zone any subject which include nine schedule should not be subject of judicial review this cannot be nullified on the ground of violation of part 3 of indian constitution but this can be nullified on the ground of violation of basic structure and that is point supreme court later again strengthened the idea of basic structure in ir koliho case supreme court again strengthened the idea of basic structure in ir koliho case and supreme court now says that even nine schedule is not away from judicial review nine schedule is also under judicial scanner nine schedule also under judicial scanner conditions to 
anything which is included in nine schedule after 24th april after 24th april 1973 this was a day of adjustment a kishan bharati case and if it is a violating the basic structure if it is violating the basic structure therefore supreme court is very much interpreting this theory basic structure till now to that become the fundamental but whether there is a criticism of uh, basic structure and criticism is very obvious because by 73 to till now judiciary has not at all set up any larger bench for defining a basic structure aur iska matlab kya hai basic structure ki baat aa gayi uska right to property kya hua right to property was repealed from the part 3 of indian constitution by janata party government by 44th amendment because janata party government says that we are truly socialist not indira gandhi indira gandhi was not truly socialist who is a truly socialist janata party government that was the idea of basic structure to aap dekhoge basic structure se bade debate aa jate hain to issues kya hai issues kya hai जब भी आपको मेंस में लिखा जाता है तो इशूज वाइज आप लिखोगे आर्टिकल सब बी इन बैकग्राउंड आप इशूज तो लिखोगे मेनली तो इशूज है और बाकी जो बेसिक आर्टिकल्स हैं कई बार हमें ऑब्जेक्टिव एग्जाम में कम दे जाते हैं दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द केशवरण भारती केस